Last time on Strip Search. What we're gonna be doing is what we call the blind drawing challenge. I already knew that I was gonna turn around and be like, Amy. Kind of a bulbous point coming out. Bulbous point? It's super difficult, it's really difficult. He has a big poof of bangs on top that look like a squished Pac-Man. Super cool guy. Yeah. Amy nailed it. Bam! You each win an Intuos 5 tablet from Wacom. Sweet! Twitter is a great tool in your arsenal. It connects you to all of your fans, but it also connects all of your fans to you. Don't we all already use Twitter? I can't believe that Twitter is a challenge. Piece of cake. I tweet all the time. To give you some of his perspective on this, please welcome Scott Kurtz. I think it's an interesting choice because I know he has a very well-known reputation for making trouble on Twitter. Really glad that they had someone that um, has a history of doing both a good and a poor job. As you continue to become kind of public figures with your work, you're not gonna be able to use Twitter the way that your friends use them. Suddenly, you feel like you can't have your own opinion because it's, it's, a, it's an opinion that influences people. It's an opinion that changes people. And you really have to think about what you say and what you put out there. Yeah, you guys are gonna discover pretty soon that what you thought was your brand, which is your work, is really a smaller subset of your real brand, which is you. Shit, I have absolutely no good experience with this. This is good, this is talking. This is like writing something on the internet. This is something I can manage. So you will have one hour to compose five tweets on a series of topics that we give you some of them are just a topic to comment on. Some of them are direct replies to you. They will be judged by Scott on their merits of not only being effective in communicating, but also on maintaining your brand and trying not to piss everyone off. So the first is going to be uh, something you have to do. You're exhibiting at a Comic-Con and you have two pieces of merch and a panel to promote. The second one is a, is a tweet you just received that you have to reply to. God, stop. Every time you write about this, I skip reading for a week. It's stupid. Stop making these strips. Not what I come to your site for. I'm at the dog park and at artist is here with his bassets. I want to say hi, but I don't want to bother him. Saw at artist at Starbucks in Seattle. What a sad sack looking motherfucker. Probably pissed barista didn't recognize him and offer a free coffee. And may not have received that tweet once. And finally, the last tweet, I don't like the way you're portraying X character in your strip. People are complex, they're not stereotypes. You just lost a reader. I was actually kind of hoping it was gonna be something like this. We did talk about it last night, and we're just like, they're probably gonna make us deal with haters somehow. And I was like, how would they even feasibly make us deal with haters? But this is a really well-managed way to do this. All right, you have one hour. I'm up against really, really tough competition. Like these people are good. Uh, many of them are very professional and, and have actually interacted with fans and the public. And that's something I don't have experience with. I was a little unsure at first just because um, I thought that my uh, Twitter answers might've come off um, as sort of soft or like I'm a little bit of a pushover. Cause I do tend to try to talk to everybody who engages me, whether it's negative or positive. I'm always trying to trying to flip that negative into a positive. And some people, they can't be flipped and they're always gonna hate you and I'm okay with that. Monica. Hello. I've seen you thinking a lot about it. Are you struggling? How do you judge a proper Twitter response aside from this was rude or this was rude? <laughs> I'm feeling really good about this challenge. I think that I already have a 
clear idea of who I am when I'm responding on Twitter, or who I am as a, a person on social media. Which one concerns you the most? Oh, uh, what concerns me the most? Um, I think probably the last one is the most concerning, because I think, right, it has both, like it's it's negative about what you're doing, but it's also has, right? Yeah. It has like a, com a more complex and a bigger maybe subject like than... legitimate criticism. Gotcha. Are you done, Erica? Yeah. You're finished? Yeah, I'm a fast tweeter. Half an hour remaining. Is this the Dunzo area? Yeah. We're all Dunzo. We're doing our Fresh Prince of Bel Air cowboy dance. Show me. I was really excited more than anything to hopefully get a second to just talk about cartooning, which we got. Do you work all digital now, or do you still do stuff by? I do work all digital. Um, I have uh, one of the first Cintiqs. My so PVP next year will be 15 years old, and on my, so my 10th anniversary, my family all got together and bought me a Cintiq. Krahulik was the one that convinced me to stop drawing art traditionally and scanning it in. The group of us were able to pin him down and just, you know, kind of shoot the shit about drawing cartoons, which is what I wanted to do coming here anyway. I had most of the answers down initially uh, and a good response, but I figured I would just take the entire time to work on them. Just under two minutes to spare. Ah, I should not have gone in pencil, I think. Well, since most of you are here, I will tell you that time is up. Oh, no. But uh, we're going to take Scott away and have him look over your tweets, and we'll be back to tell you what he thinks. Friendship time over. Time to judge. There's not one right answer, so it was tough. All right, so question number two, where people are trying to put, give you input on how to write your strip. Mackie, Mac, and Lexi, all three of you invited them to elaborate more as to how you could change your strip for them. You invited an email, you invited a direct message, which means now you have to follow them. Lexi seems to be very interested in other people writing her strip. So the fan that said, I don't like this, I don't come to your site for these stuff, she says, At fan, I'm sorry to hear that. What kind of strips would you like to see more of? I just find that very dangerous. This is your voice, and this is your content, and either they like it or they don't. But the minute you start asking people, well, what should I do? Now, the stuff that you wrote there is another guy's this stuff. So the minute you invite that in, now you're writing for them, and you're not writing for you, and it all falls apart. I think that we have a little bit of a different philosophy, just like we have completely different personalities and approaches to that medium and, and to the way that we express ourselves and interact with other people. And she did it again in the last one, she said, At fan, I'm very sorry to hear that. Would you mind elaborating in an email? I'd like to learn how I can write that character more sensitively. She's being a little bit of a pushover, and I don't see any confidence here in her own work. Do you really want an email from them on how you're doing it wrong? I just wanted, I was just curious, what kind of strips do you like? What, what would you like to see more of in the comic? It, I think it is interesting to get that kind of feedback. Maybe I could put up a poll at some point. Um, Let me stop you right there and say never do that. Never polls? Never, never do polls. that. All right. This is your voice. If they want to see something, they can write their own comic. Mm -hmm. The minute you start writing what everybody wants you to write, you're not doing your comic anymore. Well, you can't satisfy everybody. Exactly, exactly, and so. But they can, they can tell, they can elaborate with that in email, and they could say, you know, this specific part of that right. mentality, you know, that it's shameful somehow, or that like they deserve to be made fun of, or that they should be the butt of a joke, you know, That's things like that. If if I unintentionally phrase something that implies that I'm joking, making light of their situation. The only way to actually hear anything that's being said to you is to shut your mouth. And even if you have a response, don't say it. Lexi did not do that. Davis, you not only did not answer the question most people didn't answer by not engaging, you didn't answer the second question, which was about uh, the, the criticism of your strip. You just chose not to answer that. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty tame tweet, concerning what you might end up getting. Why did you choose to not answer that? Uh, I choose not to engage in something that doesn't necessarily need to be engaged in. I feel like the interpretation of 
my answers or lack of answers obviously did not come out as I intended. I actually thought it was a bit bolder to just take a stance with not responding to those who would have something negative to say about you. I don't feel like I'm gonna gain anything by addressing this person and saying, well, what is it that you don't like about these strips? Because part of the process of doing the comic is growing from it and trying to find your own voice, not only in your art style, but in your writing. Why didn't you tell them that? I think that was longer than 140 characters. <laughs> <laughs> uh, some people did, did respond that way and fit it into 140 characters. And then in the last one about the tweet about stereotypes, he tweeted to himself, at Tavis Maiden, stop being a hack and learn to write better. XOXO, Tavis Maiden. So kind of like a tongue in cheek. Kind of a tongue in cheek way of putting it out there that it's okay not to be perfect in your writing, that it's okay do, to- Do you not feel that you just kind of bailed out of three of these? I don't. No? Nope, I don't feel like I have to engage in um, something that I don't think is gonna gain me anything. I can see how writing anything, emails, Twitter, anything loses a tone. And so it's up to the person who's reading it to interpret what that tone was. Yeah, Abby in the first Twitter, she didn't mention what con she's at. She didn't mention a panel. Oh yeah, so for the last one about stereotypes, she just writes the fan off. At fan, I'll, I'll miss you. Which is a big F you, it doesn't address it. It's probably what I would do, but that is my meter yardstick by which I measure when people are doing things wrong. The dog park answer, I think Amy also handled it great. At fan. You can always check my site for upcoming appearances. I'll be here for at event all week. The puppies will be sleeping, lazy jerks. Thanks for tweeting me. Here's not appropriate to meet me, but here's where you can meet me, and I want to meet you there, so that's great. For those of you that said, yeah, come find me, you should just be aware that it's very odd when you're outside of an environment that's built for interacting with, with a, a cartoonist audience thing. You're actually inviting in a lot more than you might get at a con, Tavis. I liked your answer for this question because you didn't say come find me, you didn't say go fuck yourself, leave me alone, and you did make a joke, you had an interaction with them. At fan, I saw you too. I find your lack of dogs disturbing. Which is great, because let's say he's at the dog park still, he's like, oh, he saw it, he saw it. So he did get to bother you, but not bother you at the same time. I thought that was top notch. Obviously the toughest question was number four. Most of you chose not to respond at all. Only two of you responded. Absolutely, the right answer for most of the time is do not reply or do not engage. There is actually a lot of opportunity to win those fans back or at least to calm them down. I will say this, that Abby, you did respond and then you erased it. Yes. But we read it. And your answer was great. You wrote, but then chose not to submit. Actually, I got a hot chocolate, but realized I couldn't finish it which fills me with an insurmountable sadness. That was good? That was awesome, and I'll tell you why. Not only did he not get your goat, you explained why you were sad to the people reading going, but why she's gotta be a sad sack at Starbucks. And you got some snark in there, and you engaged, and you answered, and there was possibly an opportunity for them to be like, oh, sorry, man, I get hung over too. You said when, during your interview, Katie, that you didn't wanna be a pushover. I really like what you wrote. At fan? Hey, what reclusive comic artist getting coffee alone to fight off the hangover doesn't look like a sad sack mofo? She just ignored the parts where the guy was clearly baiting her. I thought that was great. I actually do agree that it's a really good idea not to respond to people who just, you know, bear you ill will. But um, in my experience, I've actually um, turned trolls um, into nice people. It doesn't happen that often, but it can happen. Like a drunken monkey samurai warrior, you just kung fu that, whew, that was slick. I still disagree that snark is a good idea, though, ever. Nick. My man, you used my snark. You used my trademark snark, and I love it. Scott Kurtz just told me he likes my snark. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's, a pretty, that's a pretty good feeling. You said. At fan. Yeah, man, it's her first week. She'll get in line soon enough. At least you recognize me though. Hashtag, little help next time. <laughs> it's a tough one to answer. It's easy to get pissed. I always do the wrong thing. And I was really impressed with the three of you that, that did formulate answers for that, except you panicked at the end. Why'd you panic? I didn't think it was the right answer to this like question, but like the right moral high ground, I don't know, to just like not talk to people who are just mean and negative in life. 
at all. Like, yes. can I expand on that? Sure. I don't think that she made a mistake the first time. But then when she added more. When you respond to somebody that shows up on your feed. Mm -hmm. And even if they are the well-meaning fan, well, mostly well-meaning fan who really just wants to interact with you and get your attention, now all your followers, you know, not even though they can't see him unless they follow him as well or her, um, if they look at your feed, they can see that. I just don't get a lot of hate. I present such a nice and pleasant and polite demeanor on the internet um, that in addition to just ignoring people who say rude things, uh, that dissuades people from acting out in that way. I felt really uncomfortable sitting there and, and, and listening to her uh, try to justify her choices. I did feel like that I had some legitimate points to discuss and defend and get across. I don't think she's a bad tweeter. It was just that personal conduct was just really difficult to sit through. I don't want white knights coming to my rescue. I don't want a flame war started on my behalf or... But I thought Katie did a great job of responding and not inciting anyone to jump. But you're still, even with Katie's, that's... You start acting self-deprecating when you're like, yeah, I am a sad piece of shit or whatever. Then people will be like, oh no, you're not, or that person is such an asshole, you shouldn't listen to them. And I just, I just don't feel like it's worth it to invite that kind of interaction in a public domain. It's like she's engaging Scott, like as if he was trolling her, and she feels like she has to explain that. But you realize you're gonna have to interact with people in a public domain doing this. I already do. Okay, well, all right. Rough. Katie, I thought you did a great job. I don't care what Lexi says. <laughs> it was very tough for me to judge because everyone had really great answers, but there was one person that I felt that copped out quite a bit, Tavis. Not answering this one about criticism, in addition to not answering the one that was definitely a, a, an insightful. And then I thought that even answering number five the way you did was a cop out. Uh, you know, this is a challenge and you do have to compete with other people in what you do say. And so that really worked against you, so sorry. I knew going into it that not having answers was either going to be the best thing or the worst thing. I felt like I was being pretty bold and um, you know, Scott felt that it was a cop-out, but that's how I stand. Both Katie and Amy both really impressed me with their answers. I feel really good that I didn't screw up the challenge, finally. I would rather be middle of the pack for elimination challenges, um, at least for a little bit. I, I won that first elimination challenge, um, and then I won the Intuos. Uh, so I really need to try and fly under the radar, and I was not anticipating that. Um, it's kind of a bummer. If I had to pick one person who I felt did the best overall with every one of these tweets, it would have to be Nick. I just thought you did a great job, man. I was really impressed with all of it. To see that I've managed to shine through these incredible people, like, that's, that's a good feeling. Nick is the all-around cool guy. He's got it. I'm gonna have to step up my game if I wanna, if I wanna compare, if I wanna compete, because that's two now. The one that really impressed me, the one that put you over the top of both Amy and Katie, was the answer to the fifth question. At Fan, thanks for the input. Don't worry though, there are plans in the works, and that's all I can say without spoiling it. You sneaky son of a bitch. <laughs> because here's why that's brilliant. Maybe he was stereotypical and he learned a lesson, but he didn't admit it, in fact, it was his plan all along. I have to admit, that was really good, the way he spun that. Now this person's gotta see if he kept his promise. So you know this person's gonna keep reading. More opportunity to win him over. Amazing work on that tweet. So congratulations, Nick. The good news is, you've won your second challenge in a row, and you are safe from elimination. The bad news is, and I know this will kill you, it's up to you to select the two people who will face elimination tonight. Damn, I mean, picking from this pool of candidates, that is not an easy task for Nick. There's two ways I think a person can go about this game, and they can try to play and try to game the system or try to game the game itself and, and play things to their advantages, which is okay, which is cool. I'm not gonna like tell you what I would do in your situation, but I think that there's definitely some ways that you can make this like not a 
100% like bad situation for you? I don't feel like I want to game the system or try to play the game. I think everybody has like their the things that they're scared of though, like in themselves. And, like yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an unavoidable. I was I, honestly I wanted to fly middle of the pack. I didn't insert any humor, and then um, like I just am not good at tweets. I just thought maybe just stay alive and that's fine. And then you won again, so like it's power to you. You're gonna have to come up with that, but. If I feel like somebody did not meet the requirements to move on, uh, as per the judging, per the challenges, then those people stand out to me as people that I would like to uh, put up for elimination. Nick, back again. Back again. Good job. Thank you. Was it harder this time or easier this time? Harder. Who's the first person that you are selecting to face the elimination this evening? Uh, the first person to face elimination this evening is Tavis. Why Tavis? Uh, Tavis and we talked. You're you're awesome at explaining yourself. Like you've had to deal with some stuff, man. And in a competition, in a competition setting where the challenge is to engage, like I know you could have done it. Me and him had like a moment, like a connection and a bond. And there's like. You know, it, break, it broke my heart to sit there and put him up for elimination, but I was like, look, man, when it's, when it's challenge time and you don't step up your game up to the plate, whether you believe in it or not, and try to understand what the challenge is about, you're not doing your full potential here, and let's put you up and um, see if you can earn your place back here. My second pick to face elimination tonight is Lexi. And why Lexi? Uh, this pick was con considerably harder. Um, I guess it, it's kind of the opposite region. There was too much engagement. I agreed with, I agreed so much with what you were saying, but he, it was almost like you were going to go on the attack. Three out of five of those questions were engaging with somebody who might have something negative to say about the way you say something, and the way she just kept going on and on was almost reflective of that challenge it was like an, uh, an additional part of that it was almost a lesson in engaging a troll too much like I, i'm not saying scott is a troll but you know uh if you would have just stopped it, it got really uncomfortable that was kind of harsh to listen to scott can be a bit of a troll i got along with lexi from day one and tavis and i just started bonding and so it's just i guess i'm surprised because i now I have to see both of them compete against each other. Tavis, Lexi, you two will face elimination tonight. Go upstairs, pack your bags, and come with me to meet the creators. I am super bummed because I like them both, and I totally want to have a push-up contest with Tavis, so he has to come back. Next time on Strip Search. Do you think you'll ever trust your gut again? Oh yeah. So you think Lexi should go home? I'm going to aim for it. Lexi, are you worried that time is slipping away from you and you've produced almost nothing? I wouldn't call this almost nothing. Oh shit, jacket's coming off. Would you say that your comic strip is erotically charged? Is 90 minutes enough? This is a challenge. I don't think Lexi's gonna finish.